happy Saturday, everybody. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and you're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. Today is going to be extremely creative, and you'll find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologues. This is when we hit the streets of Accra. We speak to so many beautiful women on their opinion on something. Let's find out what it is this week. It's important that Ghana invests in the mammograms to have the equipment in every region. And then down to the district. If we can have one district, one factory, why can't we have one regional uh, hospital to start with one mammogram? Or one district, one mammogram? And have the various screening centers to strategically placed so that people, women especially, can go for early detection. Why will you hold on to your breast just because you want to hold on to some man? It's not worth it. If he gives you the chance, and the chance is to have a mastectomy, do it! Because my mother died from breast cancer trying to hold on to um, her breast. And I think that, you know, our breast is not breast us. Breast cancer to me has still not been clarified well. I remember way back when I was in the polytechnic, I attended a seminar at Latter-day Saints. And um, we were taught that is a lamp, when you see the lamp developing, then it means there is something wrong with your breast. So I started researching on it. I you know women, when we reach our month, you feel some things in it. So when I felt it after that time, I rushed to the hospital to say, oh, I may be developing breast cancer. And then they told me that was normal. So the difference between that being normal and then the abnormal one, that is where the ambiguity to me comes from. Because I know that something has to be in. But when do you clarify that something which is in, whether it's the good one or the, the old one? Hereditary. If any member of your family has one, then you have to be on your toe. And I've also witnessed um, what they've been saying, that early treatment kills it. Because I did have um, a classmate at Poly who developed such lambs and at a very age good stage the early stage they removed it and she's been fine ever so yes maybe i would phone she will know for women breast cancer maybe i would discuss she will know for women breast cancer now me were we met back with me when your breast cancer you didn't need it back no 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 and you'll be on them sir and you'll be on your pass it's time for the woman on the move. She's a hard-working go-getter, pressing on towards her goal. Let's find out who she is. My name is Henrietta Amatsanki. I'm a marine pilot at GPH Igapoa, Takrade. I was here for my national service, and then after my national service, I was taken on. And then being the first woman in the environment, I took the opportunity to learn how to handle the tags. I became a tag master, and then I was promoted to be a pilot. I'm now a marine pilot. Takrade is the is the only point with a female pilot in GPHA. I have here seven pilots and Amma is one of them. She works like any of the males. The sea stole her heart with its exquisite beauty. Amma Tanki says that is the long and short of her story. And you can easily see what she means. We have a local knowledge of the port. So anytime a vessel is coming inside or going out of the port, we go as an advisor to the captain and then we cone the vessel in and out of the port. On a typical day like this, her tax is to berth this vessel, 
coming into the port to load manganese, among others. Her job is described as the most dangerous in the world at night because several pilots have died embarking and disembarking on a moving vessel. Women in the industry accounts for only 2%. Out of the world, 1.2 million seafarers, according to the International Labour Organization. A lot of challenges. Men don't want to be competed with, especially being a woman. They don't really like it, so they'll do everything to push you out. But if you show them that you are here to stay and you know what you're about, and then you give them the respect that they need, they'll give it to you back and then you work with them. Yes, I have a family, I have three kids. It's challenging combining the two, I mean, but you have to draw the line. Um, uh, it's a little tough. No, if you see her, her nature, she is the, the boy type. No wonder she comes this far. Every September 26th, is used to recognize and celebrate industry players in the maritime space. This year's theme is focused on empowering women in the community. The sea is not as scary as it looks. And once you are determined and focused, you can make it. And Ama is such a person who is flying high the flag of Ghana in the sub-region as the first female pilot. Our winning woman for today is Genevieve Terrison, a very lovely lady. She's the founder and CEO of Genshila Fashion Academy, and I'm so glad to have her on the show. You're very, very welcome. You're looking really, really nice. I can tell this is one of your pieces, and I, I can already tell you what I love about it. I love the lace trimmings on there, but you know, I'll give you my, my details later. Okay, oh. you're very, very welcome on the show. Thank you so very I want much. To, I want you to tell us everything, you know, because I read your profile and I thought it was really, really interesting because you started in health and now you're in fashion. So we're just wondering, you know, what led you there and all that. So today, the ladies watching are going to be so inspired to follow their passion and to just believe that they can do it all. So again, you're very, very welcome. So tell us a bit about how you started. And did you think that you would end up an entrepreneur as you are now? Actually, no. Uh, doing other things, as you said, I was also sewing for pe uh, sewing and selling for people. I wasn't sewing it okay. myself. Other people sew for me and I sell. Okay. Yeah. But uh, doing it myself came about when I have problem or challenges with fixing garments that I sold to people. That okay. There were problems with it. I couldn't fix it myself because I didn't sew, sew them. Yeah. So taking it back for an alteration becomes a problem. They are very reluctant to fix it for me. So I said, okay, why not quit whatever I'm doing, go and learn it for myself and put it into practice. So initially, I wasn't just thinking of uh, being an entrepreneur, just making money was the essence, was what okay. drove me there. Okay. But when I started the school and completed, I was putting what I love most into action, mm. following my passion. Okay. Then... Um, People were coming to me, customers were coming to me, they want to enroll their awards for apprenticeship. So let me go back again very, very quickly. So you were actually, before doing, you were a health coach. I know you were a health coach before. And whilst you were doing that, you were, were you designing the clothes or just giving it to other people to sew? Were you, were you part of the whole design of it? Most at times, I tell you what I want in a particular garment for a particular client. Okay, so you were designing it, but then you didn't like maybe the finishing or something, and you couldn't sort of, you know, alter it because you didn't do it. So You're that right. pushed you to go and study. Exactly. Designing. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So people were coming to me to train their awards, their children, mm -hmm. their sisters in mm -hmm. apprenticeship. Okay. But I didn't go through the apprenticeship process, mm -hmm. so it was difficult for me to do it to like accept, accept them. Mm -hmm. So I said, why not come up with a school? Because looking at my environment, there was no fashion school 
around. Okay. That's okay. Then and let where me was put it? Was together. this in Accra? Yeah, Medina, okay. New Road, okay. near Rolling Circle. Okay. So I started with uh, five students. Okay. Yeah. But you actually had the confidence that you could teach somebody else? Oh, yes. You did? Yes, okay. because it's, it's... It comes naturally. So it's naturally. probably a gift. Did you go and study it? Did you go and learn? Yes. You did? Yes. Yeah, but it comes naturally to you. you know, it comes naturally to you. Yes. So it's probably yes, a yes. gift as well. It's a gift, wow. I know. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. a gift. So I went to the school, mm -hmm. Joyce Ababio. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now GCCAD. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's where I trained. So I opened the school with five students. Wow. Uh, and uh, that was in 2018, okay. 5th March, okay. 2018. That's last year? Just last year. Okay. And we had our maiden graduation recently. Wow, and congratulations. Thank congratulations. you very much. Yes. How okay. many students do you have now? Students, mm -hmm. over 60. Really? Yes. So are you teaching them exactly what you went through? And, of what have you, mm -hmm. and an improvement, exactly what what I went through, and an improved version of what I learned. So probably what you wanted to learn exactly. is what you are giving to your, exactly. your students now. That's even fantastic. More. <laughs> so before you actually started the school and before you trained, went into training, in, in the interim, in between, you know, leaving the health coach and then, you know, starting, being a health coach and then starting your own business, were there any challenges and how did you overcome it? I'm asking this because there are so many ladies out there. I know men watch as well, but when we say ladies, you know, the Today's Woman Show, mm -hmm. you know, but there are so many ladies out there who are almost afraid to jump into what they want to do because of that, you know, that, that interim moment there. So in, did you have a, a, a period like that? And what did you do? How were you able to overcome it until you started? Yeah, uh, starting, you'll be contemplating, is it going to work? But I think one of the things that drove me was focus. Mm. I was focused. I wanted to do something extraordinary, something that it's not usual. And refusing to take a risky self is riskier. That's so, true, I like that. Refusing to take a risk is riskier. I really like that, that's so true. So, yeah. That was what pushed me okay. through. So focus. Yeah, and did you do anything to make some money? How were you, make, how, how were you able to, to fund the school? You know, because some people to say that, you know, they don't even know if they can afford to go to a training school. You know, Joyce Abibio is, is one of the best in the, in, in the country. Oh, yes. So many of the best fashion designers went to Joyce Abibio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's one of the best. And it's, some people say, you know, they don't know how to even raise the funds. So did you have any support or how, how did you do it? Oh, by the grace of God, my husband supported me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They so are good men out there. Oh, sure. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> he supported me to go to the school, through school and whatever I'm doing now, he's yeah. a backbone of it. Oh, that's mm. nice. He that's doesn't good. like showing. Oh, that's fantastic. There are some good men out there. Good oh, men, yes. good men. <laughs> Let's toast to them, to the good men out there. Happy, Mr. Happy, thank you so much. God bless you. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely cocktail from the one-to-one -one bar here at the Moving Pick Ambassador Hotel. It is great. So, you know, I'm, I'm so intrigued because health is... Like, you know, it's two opposites, health and then fashion. You know, so as a child, did you grow up loving fashion? You know, where did your interest in fashion, where did it stem from? Uh, I Initially, I didn't know I have these gifts in me because growing up, I didn't see myself a fashion designer. And as children would play with needle and other things, my mom would say, not my mom would say, I know I don't like needlework and those things. But anytime I go to my seamstress or a tailor to fix something for me, I tell them what I want. Okay, I want this. I don't want that. I want this. So you're like, a designer. Yeah, I, was, I will be specific about how I want my outfit to come out. Mm. So anytime I wear my clothes, people ask, who designed it for you? Mm. Or who is your seamstress? I say, oh. I can't take you there, but she can make the same thing for you. Right. Then I will quickly take a tape measure, take your measurement. <laughs> I learned how to do it. So I asked them, mm -hmm. then they showed me how to do it. I said, okay, instead of taking you there to go and give somebody money, let me do it. Put something small on it. 
and make yeah, some so cuts there. Yeah, a businesswoman, basically. Exactly. That, that's, that's, just, that's just being a businesswoman. That's fantastic. Mm. So the start of Jen Sheila Academy, I mean, people were asking you to train the awards and all of that. In the beginning, did you, did you have any fears or any challenges when you started, when you started training? Yes. And what were they? How did you overcome them? Um, initially, those who were interested to, those who actually show interest in bringing their awards, when I set up, they were not ready to bring their awards again. Why? Because they don't see why people learn it for three years and they don't really make uh, most out of it sometimes. They don't see how somebody can learn it one year and come out successful. Right. How long did you, how long was your course when you went to study? How long was it? It's for? a year. It was a year. Yes. Okay, okay. So when you said a year, they thought it was too short. They thought it was too short. Okay. And when I said uh, I was doing it a fashion school, not necessarily a apprenticeship, mm -hmm. they were not comfortable mm -hmm. with it. So those I wanted to start with, mm -hmm. uh, two of them withdrew. Then again, my husband sets in and sponsored some people who were interested wow. but couldn't pay wow. for that's it. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I started with them. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. So how did you feel when you opened? And because I, 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 I read here on your profile that you actually have branches, not even just one. Oh, actually, it's just a branch we are opening in Keta for now. Okay, so you're, there you're are other, an extra branch? Yeah, an extra branch. Okay. Uh -huh. For the other ones, we are still working on it, and okay. we haven't gotten anywhere. Okay. Uh -huh. so okay, so you're yet to open branches, but you're opening one in Keta now. In Keta and why now. have you chosen Keta? Keta, because um, I feel there are no fashion schools around that vicinity. When you go to Kumasi, you will get, when you go to the upper side, but I choose Keta because Is looking around, from? yes. Oh, of course. So then you are being patriotic. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's fantastic. That's oh, fantastic. I know yeah. number nine have love for number nine. Oh, yes. I don't know if we can put that on there. Oh, yes. <laughs> You know, but yeah, but it's fantastic. So, you know, you're, you're taking what you've learned, you're taking your mm -hmm. passion and what is earning you income back to your home, back yeah. to your village to, mm -hmm. to give the same. That, that's beautiful. That's fantastic. That's Congratulations. Thank you. So what is it like now? Have you, have you opened it yet? And what, do you, what is the response now? Uh, the response, people around are interested, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But we are yet to launch. Okay. We are yet to launch. Okay. And we'll be doing that in December. Okay, okay, that's really, really good. So throughout this journey, you know, starting your own business, mm -hmm. apart from your husband supporting you, which is fantastic, have you ever wanted to give up? Have you ever felt, oh, no, discouraged, like, oh, I don't know if I can do it? Of course, when you have a husband or a good friend or somebody beside you, it, it helps you, you know, because that person is your support. Now, just picture it. If he wasn't there or if you didn't have anybody, would you have given up? What do you think? I don't think I would have given up. Mm -hmm. Because I believe doing it and making mistakes and failing, you learn experiences that money cannot buy. Mm. Yeah. So I wouldn't have given up though. Yeah, but have there been any challenges, any difficulties oh, in the whole, in this yeah, journey? Yeah, there were a lot of challenges acquiring a place for the school. So where's the school now? The Medina New Road. Okay. Medina New Road, okay. near Rolling Circle. Okay. And it's a big school. Uh, no, it's a small school. Okay. We are growing now. No, I'll come and visit. I'll come, I'll come and visit it. Yeah. We are growing now. Yeah. But people say it's a good school. I'm so and glad. we believe yeah. we are doing yeah. something right. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of challenges. First, acquiring a place. Mm -hmm. And also, process of registration mm -hmm. and accreditation. It is not very smooth. Uh, a lot of people will do it and will not go through accreditation, registration so how, and what accreditation. Was the process? How did you, how were you accredited? It's a little, no, we don't have a, we, we were registered. Mm -hmm. Accreditation for like an affiliate, mm -hmm. uh -huh, okay. it's a little cumbersome, mm -hmm. but so did you do we are it? still true, yes, okay. with code Okay, yes. okay. And so who are you accredited to? Who, who are you affiliated with? No, with code Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't know what to tell us. <laughs> oh, Codvet is a a, a body that uh, 
certify or give accreditation to uh, technical and vocational institutes. Okay, okay. So they had to come in and do it. And it's yes. good that you did it the right way. Yes. You didn't just start, you did everything the right way. That's fantastic. Right. So how are you able to combine your business with, with, with family as well? I mean, you're a wife, so you have, mm. you know, I don't know if you have children, but, you know, you are, you are a wife, you have a home to take care of and all that. And then you have your business as well. You have children there as well that you are training you know so how, how are you how are you able to combine the two of it uh, i think it's planning mm -hmm. proper planning mm -hmm. when you plan it will be a little difficult but you can sail through mm. i'm a mother of four wow yeah wow <laughs> a you boy look and like three a mother. girls fantastic yeah so you have your chores at home and your business is just about planning and balancing. Yeah, oh, there is wow. nothing extraordinary. Yeah, and and are any it. of your children at the moment showing signs of like interest in fashion? Yes, the last one. Really? How old is he or she? She is seven. And and so what does she do? Like, what does she do? How do you know that she wants to be like? Is it like what picking what you're wearing or wanting to come with you or what? What, what signs of interest does she show? A lot of interest, wanting to help me anytime I'm doing something, and she chooses her wardrobe. If we are oh, going wow. out, she would like to know. She will, she would dress up, go to the mirror, and check. No, this one is not working. This is working. Oh, oh mommy, check this for me. This is what I want to do, and I realize she has an interest. And now, one thing that I have found personally is that sometimes a lot of um, fashion designers don't even have time for themselves for their styling. So you find that a lot of designers out there are making beautiful clothes for other women, and a lot of the time they're not even dressed. You know, I mean, I'm a personal branding coach, so I always say that, you know, your brand, you are your brand. So, you know, when I saw you and I saw you wearing this, I was like, oh, okay, that's a Jenshila lady. I mean, because I just saw the outfit and how, it was, you know, you put it together and everything. But a lot of the time, it's just because of busyness. So you're so busy sorting out somebody else that you don't have time for yourself. Do you have an issue with that? Not at all. Okay. I believe people buy you the way you sell yourself. Mm. Even before I became a fashion designer, when you a seamstress or you a designer, you are not wearing clothes very well. I say, you can't sew something for yourself. How well can you f sew something nice yes. for me? Yeah. Uh -huh. So yes. I don't so have a problem with you've that. Heard it, you've heard it from the fashion designer herself. <laughs> Your image sells you. You have to carry, and I, and I keep saying, and I love what, she's, what you've said, that you have to carry yourself in a way that you know, people want to buy whatever it is you're going to offer them. So that, that's fantastic. And you have to carry it on. I, I want to see your wardrobe. I want to see your wardrobe. How many times did that? How many times you change a day? I'd love to see that. So what's your, what's your next path in your career? I know you're going to open a branch in Keta, and then, you know, so what else, what else do you have in mind? And then who are the teachers you have as well now? Okay, for now we have um, about five teachers. Okay, how did you get them? Uh, I got them through adverts and okay. through mouth. I tell people I want. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Teachers and I get. We have a teacher for fashion illustration, okay. fashion design. The fashion design, uh, the students are many, so one person cannot teach it. Mm. Okay. And we have morning and afternoon sessions, so we get more fashion design teachers on board. Mm. Then we have fashion illustration. Fashion illustration teaches you how to put your thoughts and ideas into sketches and drawing. Mm. Then the business management teaches you how to manage your business after you've completed the school. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got lovely wow. people wow. on board. That's fantastic. Miss Benny, Daniel does very, very well. Hi, hi. <laughs> Mr. Kobna Fodjo also does very well. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, Mr. Prince Ba, also for fashion design. Wow. Then Mr. Ajay uh, Menu for business management. Miss Christine Aduti. They are all doing Fantastic. very, very well yes, congratulations. in helping the school grow. Oh, that, Thank that, you up there. That, <laughs> that's really, really good. Now, what about your plans for Kita? Mm -hmm. How are you going to find teachers to, are you going to find teachers in the area or will you get teachers from here who will be willing to move? For now, we'll be getting teachers from Accra to that place. Okay. And when we get teachers over there, 
we would. So you got people who are willing to move? Oh, yes. Okay. Because there are other applications and we are sorting them through. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I've had a lovely chat with you, Genevieve. I like some of the things that you said. I, I think what, what, what I've taken the most is, what did you say? It's even riskier to not take a risk. That is deep. i like you to talk to the ladies out there. There are so many ladies who have so much within them. They have the capabilities. They have gifts. They have passion. I mean, they can do it, but they're not doing it now because of fear. I want you to encourage a lady out there, somebody watching right now. I'm sure it's like, oh, I wish I was in her shoes. I wish I could be her, you know. So they can't be you, but they can be the best of who they are. So speak to somebody out there and then just give them a word of encouragement. Okay, my word of encouragement today for the youth out there, follow your passion. Be focused on whatever you do. And if you feel you can't do it alone, fall on somebody who you know can do it best mm. and learn from them. When I started, I realized I couldn't handle it alone. So I fell on a, a friend of mine that we attended the same school, Miss mm. Benny Daniels. Okay. Uh -huh. So we do it hand in hand. And so she's, she's been part very, of the, she's oh part of yes. the business. Okay. She's been very supportive. Mm. I knew I could do something. She could also do something on her own. Yeah. But collaborating with her yeah. have led Pushed us yeah. up. Yeah. Now this has led me to actually ask you another question. And I'm so glad that you're working with another woman. Because mm. women generally have sometimes issues working with another woman. You know, envy sets in, mm. there's jealousy, there's, you know, intimidation, competition, you know, and all of that. And then there's this a popular saying, which I say is a wrong saying, that a, a woman is your worst enemy mm. to another woman. I think, you know, it's so, so, so wrong. I always, you know, I say never, nobody should say that. So how, what have you found actually working with a woman? It's been the best so far. Mm. Even though I have a lot of men on board. Mm -hmm. It's been the very best so far. Our interest is to impact lives with creative skills, not competition, not a challenge. She is not struggling for name. I am also not struggling for name. Oh. So always fall on somebody that mm. you know can help you do it mm. right. Somebody you if trust. You, somebody you trust. Mm. Mm, that's fantastic. Ladies, it's been awesome today. I really like, she's spoken lots of words of wisdom very you know little but very deep so i hope you maybe go back it will be repeated on friday watch it again and write notes this has been very 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 deep very oh true words of wisdom that i really like women if you can't do it on your own find somebody that you can trust fall on them they will push you back up and you can work together you are today's woman and you can do it as well we'll be right back was it to set up your business, register your business, uh, taxes, does it make economic sense? For me it's a learning phase because you can't really say I am earning 3,000 every month so I'm paying this much. It's something that is, is, is going to be worked on so as a startup I think one there should be a lot of education on how startups should or how taxes should apply to certain types of startups because others are startup, each everyone is unique. Sometimes the information you get is just lump sum. But I think in the future, if we really want to grow the um, entrepreneur economy, we should really break it down into segments because or into categories because each um, category has its own peculiarities and like it works differently. So you think the GRE should be innovative in approaching taxation I think, of small I think, businesses? I, yes, I think they're already being innovative, but sometimes cascading the information down mm. properly is where the challenge is. The brand sources 80% of its beads from the Krobo community as it aims to ensure the cycle of wealth is maintained locally. For Dumasio Krobo, um, Koforidia bead market, and also I have a 
a bead maker who turns my raw material, which is the glass, into beads for me. So there are certain works that, um, I think something like this, for instance, these oranges and these black bits, he would have produced them specifically for my design. And we are actually helping the economy in two ways. One, we are working with people in the villages who wouldn't normally have access. Materials used in production are eco-friendly to protect the environment. Um, I'm also collecting waste. First Saturday of the month, you can get me at a fair in town and you can bring us your old wine bottles and would we'll gladly accept them. Currently, I'm part of the Ghana Climate Innovation Center. When you started your business, for example, how much did you need to inject into the business to get it to that level? My money was 40 CDs. I was playing my mom's beads at home and she got frustrated with me one day. She was like, take your money and let's go to Kofuria Bead Market. And this was 2008. Fast forward 2015, 16, when I really wanted to push more capital in it, about 5,000 went in in between 2015 2016 because at that point you had to buy more materials branding social media you know mm. understanding the the terrain properly but initial capital was 40 ghana cities and now when you look back mm -hmm. and you compare the returns to uh the capital that you put in how is it turnover does it does it have you been able to break even and make profit Oh yes, yeah. after um, almost three years, definitely I've been able to um, break it even and make profits. But it's running a startup is a continuous investment. Let's take you back to 2008 before you started. If you had a chance to think of going into business, would you still choose beading? Yes. It's been an amazing episode today. I took on so many words of wisdom from the founder of Jen Sheila Fashion. I hope you did too. What I love the most about what she said was, it's riskier to not take a risk. So ladies out there, take a risk. Yes, fear will come, but press on, push on. Try your best. Try. Because if you don't try, that's even a risk. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't miss it next week, Saturday, 11 a.m., on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And many thanks to our sponsors, to GTP, to Yaz, and to Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel. Thank you so much. You are pushing us on. Have a lovely weekend and see you next week.